Hi, this is a quick run through of my add-on, Bist at Splendor Baker. So in this scene, we have a set of high resolution objects and a set of um, low resolution objects. And we're going to bake uh, the textures from the high resolution objects to the low resolution objects. First off, once you've installed the add-on, shows up here. Press N to open that panel. Now, guided user interface, I recommend that to be on at all times, uh, usually, um, because otherwise you're going to have a bunch of settings that might get you confused. Uh, by using guided user interface, it's sort of clear what you should fill in next in order to complete the setup. So first off is path. This is the folder that the images will be baked to. Got a bunch of settings here uh, that I will go over in detail later. Next, bake collections. This is where you put your low resolution meshes so that they can receive the textures that are baked. So I'm gonna create a bake collection. So you can see here that we now have a purple collection called bake collection dot one. I'm going to rename that to pliers. Okay. Next up is bake passes. I'm going to add four of those base color, uh, normal roughness and metallic. Next off, we're going to connect some high resolution objects. So whatever object is currently active is what will be displayed here. You can also pin that object so it doesn't change when you change the active object. I'm going to select these and then I'm going to press find high poly by bounding box. So it's going to look in a specific scene and I'm going to choose world space. So if it finds another object that matches this object in terms of bounding box, it's going to connect that as the high resolution mesh or object and one object only. Now, uh, looking at the high resolution mesh, we can see that uh, this object will need to be added as well. Metal center high and some uh, text here as well. So if I want to add that, I can pin this, then show the high resolution mesh and add selected. Or I can Let's do the lower one. I'm just going to add a slot. I know it's called center something. Great. And here we had a text as well. There we go. Okay. Everything set up in terms of high resolution objects. Now it's time to bake. So if, if I want to bake the entire uh, collection, I can press bake. And if I just want to bake one object uh, and then it's going to bake those pixels and put them on top of the existing image. You can press this one. Okay, bake. And the baking is done. So if I want to open the folder of this bake collection, I can press this button. Each collection will be baked into its own subfolder, right? You can see the bake textures here. But it would also be nice to see the textures on the material of the object. So by uh, selecting these, I can go in and press create bake preview material. That means the add-on is going to check, oh, this object, which collection does it belong to? Oh, it belongs to this collection. Which textures are belonging to that collection as well? And then assign it to the material or rather create a new material. There we go. And in bake passes, we can also inspect the different bake textures as well. So here we see that we could use some more samples. This is uh, due to me using a sort of a curvature mask that just requires some more samples. So instead of using auto for samples, I'm going to use set and raise it to eight or something. Now, the nice thing is here that this is looking good. So I can just like this and this and press bake on either if I press bake on selected objects, it's going to bake all of the passes. But if I press bake here, it's just going to bake that specific pass. Cool. Looking better. And that's really it.
Hi, this is a quick start for baking low resolution objects in my add-on Boosted Splendor Baker. So if you have an asset that you have textured with uh, uh, like a complex network and uh, perhaps you've uh, painted some textures and stuff and then you just want to bake it into one textures and perhaps bring it into another external application, this is uh, a good workflow. So here you don't, uh, you don't have a high resolution object and bake that onto a low resolution ob object, but rather just bake the shading itself on the object. First off, we set a path. And here's the important thing. We're going to change the workflow from high res to low res to just bake low res surface. Okay, then select the object we want to bake, create a bake collection. Going to call this one planet. And uh, let's see what else. Bake passes. We want to bake. Yeah, base color and displacements. So now we just need to press bake. Okay, just open the folder. This is the resulting textures. I'm gonna try to uh, set up a shading network just to evaluate that uh, bake. I'm gonna scrap that material. It's a new material. Let's use the base color of planet, connect it here. And then I would like to add a displacement modifier. Use the, uh, let's see, strength was 0.35. Press a new texture. You're going to use UVs as the coordinates. Then I'm going to connect the displacement for the planet. And there we go. Okay, settings. First off, we have something called guided user interface. This is used so that I sort of guide the user to fill in the next necessary part to uh, continue with the setup. When this is off, uh, I guess it can be um, a bit too much to take in at first, I guess. So first off, you select where, you, uh, where your images should be rendered to. And once that's filled in, you can set resolution, uh, X and Y, and a percentage as well. And then we have naming options. So in this case, bake pass type plus collection name and underscore as the naming separator. So the uh, image file name will then be normal is the baking pass type. Then we have underscore which is the naming separator. And finally, the uh, collection name, cube. And then we have PNG, which is the file extension. Bake workflow is by default, high res to low res, which means that you have a high resolution object and you can bake from that onto the low resolution object. If I bake uh, the color off of this onto this, uh, this will the bake texture will become red, right? But if I change this to a low resolution surface bake type, we will bake out this Voronoi pattern, which is kind of blue. Then we have a cage when you bake with high res to low res. And cage is, um, you can imagine it being a copy of your object. And then it is fattened along the mesh normals with this amount. And then the trace, ray tracing goes back in again and fights the high resolution surface. Also, when you have hard edges like this, if you don't have cage on, the surface, each face that has a hard edge will sort of bake on its own, kind of. So this uh, surface will just go out here and then in again. So I can show you how that looks. Yeah. So you see, we get these sort of edges here, uh, which is unwanted. And we can also notice that anti-aliasing, post-process anti-aliasing is off. So we get this sort of jagged uh, pixel pattern here. Now, if I turn cage on and also turn uh, post-process anti-aliasing on, I can bake again. And now we get a much smoother line here. And also we have a much better bake here as well. 
Then uh, we have uh, subpixel sampling. What it technically does is rendering the image out in a double resolution and then scale it back down to its original size so that you get better um, anti-aliasing. But this uh, post-process anti-aliasing is uh, quite fast and does the job quite well. So uh, this basically increases the render time times four because you know your original image size is like that. And when you increase it by two, like that, so times four. And then we have margin multiplier. So the margin multiplier is eight pixels uh, with the current render settings. So it's how much it bleeds out, right? My idea with this was that it's just a multiplier based on the resolution. So if you go lower, the multiplier of the margin will uh, decrease as well. Final uh, file format. At PNG, JPEG, Targa, TIFF, OpenXR, etc. Color, you can bake RGB, RGBA, um, black and white, 16, 32 bits, depending on your file format and compression and stuff like that. It get different settings uh, depending on your uh, file format over here. Let's have a look at bake collections. Bake collections um, is a collection that is purple by default, and it defines a set of objects that can be baked together and share UV space, um, yeah, texture space. So uh, here, all of these belong to the fires bake collection. Just gonna delete this, and I'm gonna create one bake collection for the metal part, and one bake collection for the uh, handle and we can see here that we have a button called UV pack so this will UV pack these objects and these if I press open it will open the folder that it will bake to but if that folder doesn't exist yet it will get an error I can press bake all collections and all of these uh, collections will be baked Nice, but nothing has updated. This uh, is because we need to um, create new bake preview materials since we put these objects in new bake collections. Uh, now we can also open the folder since we have baked the textures and the folder has been created. We also have this button, bake selected objects. So bake all collections, we'll bake all of these collections. This button will just bake the metal part collection and uh, bake selected objects will bake just this object and keep the pixels of all the other objects. So let's see. Cool. And I can show the latest baking report as well. And this one will delete all the bake images within the file. When using the bake workflow, high resolution to low resolution, uh, it's a common practice to explode the objects so that they don't intersect and thereby we avoid some baking uh, issues. Uh, now you will hopefully never encounter an object being exploded because that happens all under the hood. But if you ever uh, run into some type of bug, you can just select the objects and then press this button, reset location of the selected objects after explosion, and the objects will uh, go back to their original location. Looking at bake passes here, we can see we got some help over here. Probably a link to this video. Um, you can add a new bake pass with this button and you can remove it by pressing the uh, X on the bake pass. If you select one or more objects, you can bake this specific bake pass for this and this object, which is nice because then it's a bit faster than baking all the passes on all the objects. You can also have a look at your separate bake passes with the eye icon like this. And if you expose with this button, there are some more settings. You can set a specific name so that if you activate 
using bake pass name it will use this name when writing the uh, image file bake locations is uh, usually automated by default uh, so that means that most passes uses exploded so that basically all the objects are separated like so so that they don't intersect and this means that there are less issues when baking because some objects intersect and uh, that can lead to artifacts but if they're exploded it's fine passes like ambient occlusion does not use exploded per default because um, this object might you might want to have uh, occlusion coming from this object to this object right but you can set the ambient occlusion pass to be uh, exploded as well of course and uh, sample type is auto by default which is usually fine but now on this uh, base color i use a uh, like a wear thing here that uses the uh, curvature setup that requires some more sampling you can set samples here set it to whatever you like auto is usually one actually for most passes unless it's ambient occlusion or something ray tracing heavy uh, then it's set to 32. bake scene auto usually sets it to a temporary bake scene uh, which means that you know if we would have a huge scene with a lot of stuff and we only want to bake these it's much uh, faster to bake it if we bring it into a temporary scene. But ambient occlusion, for instance, will um, bake in the current scene by default. Uh, the reason for that is if we have a lot of objects on the side, which doesn't belong to the bake pass, they will still cast ambient occlusion onto the object that is baked. Then we have post process and most passes does not use any type of post props process but ambient occlusion and shadow and stuff like that uh, which requires a lot of uh, sampling uses denoise in the post process normal also has this uh, normal map type setting being open gl or direct x whenever you add a new pass you can set the bake type here as well and uh, one interesting pass is the channel transfer which basically just uses uh, a compositor so when you are working in game development you might have a texture and you want to have um, like the red channel from uh, the normal and also the green channel from the normal and then you might want the uh, blue channel from the roughness which is called packing you can set the R source to uh, normal, normal again, and then roughness for the blue channel. And I can even like switch it around here as well. Then I can press bake here. You need to select those first. And then we can inspect the baked image as well. When you are using the bake workflow high resolution to lower us, you need to set up so that each low resolution object ha have a corresponding one or more corresponding high resolution objects so basically the objects that should go in is the objects that should be baked onto the uh, low resolution object so one of the quickest way of doing this is just select everything and then press find high poly by bounding box and after doing that get this little window let's choose world space for our current scene and now when i select something it has found its first matching object based on the uh, bounding box so the reason i'm not adding more than one is that it becomes kind of tricky to uh, add more um, it's hard to be <laughs> to make it perfectly reliable so um, you need to add additional objects by doing it manually so here i can just select my low resolution object pin it then show the high resolution object and uh, just add selected and uh, same thing here just gonna pin that yeah it's the uh, metal center high like this is two objects which needs to be baked onto this one 
I'm gonna add a slot. It was called centered something. Yeah. Same for this one. Did I already add it? Center. Yeah. Okay. Now we can also check if, yeah, by selecting different low poly objects, we can see the high resolution object here. But sometimes it's just nice to see it selected in the outliner as well. So you can select this and then press select high res. And we can see this one and this one is selected. And if you want to remove all of these, you can just select the objects and then press remove all high poly from selected. Finally, uh, I got some links here. You can suggest a feature or report a bug uh, through these buttons. Fill it out. It's also linked to my uh, Twitter, YouTube and ArtStation. I will probably not have time to answer a lot of uh, support questions on Twitter and stuff like that, but you can always try. All right, that's it.